What's up everybody, Nathan Brown here with FC Piero and today I'm here to show you how to replace the oil filter housing on a Mark V GTI. Uh, we have this 2008 Volkswagen GTI behind me. Uh, it has the FSI EA113 engine in it and a leak at the oil filter housing is one of the more common problems you might encounter. Uh, now this engine is used in a lot of different Volkswagens and Audis. Uh, including the 06 to 08 GTI and GLI. Uh, you have the Audi TT, uh, TT front track in 2008. You have the TTS, uh, Mark VI Golf R, B7 Audi A4, et cetera. So you might not have a Mark V GTI exactly, but there's a lot of other cars that this applies to. Uh, the reason we're replacing it is, of course, is because it's leaking. Um, now, being that the oil filter housing is a point of high pressure and high volume, so once you start to get a leak there, it gets pretty bad. Typically, you're gonna notice a little bit of an oil leak down the front of the block. It'll begin to collect on the after run pump. You might notice it when you do oil changes and things like that. And once it starts to happen, it's probably gonna get worse pretty quickly. Uh, and again, it's because it's high pressure and high volume. So as soon as that oil starts leaking out, it kind of starts dumping down the front of the block. Um, you might wanna do a quick degrease just to make sure that's where it's coming from. Um, just to kind of like check the source on it, uh, but it, it's usually pretty obvious. Uh, in terms of why it leaks, well, basically age. Uh, it seems to happen around 150, maybe 175, 200,000 miles on a lot of these cars, maybe around 10 to 12 years old. Uh, the housing, as you can see, is made out of plastic. Typically, when these start leaking, I do not recommend reusing the original housing. When you pull the old one off, you'll notice that it is probably warped on the gasket surface, and the plastic is also usually quite brittle. So you can take the time and just replace the gasket, which is you know 10 or 12 bucks, but ultimately, you're probably gonna end up replacing the housing. Um, one, it may not seal correctly. Two, when you're trying to remove the old gasket, it's usually rock hard, and the, the housing will usually crack when you do that. Um, additionally, there's some other stuff in the general area of the oil filter housing that you're going to want to replace. So we're going to do that today. Um, for example, I know that the PCV breather hose is cracked on my car, so I'm going to replace that. Uh, and I'm also going to replace the dipstick and the dipstick tube. Uh, those are both kind of like while you're in there uh, kind of jobs. Uh, some other things that you're going to need to complete this include the throttle body gasket, because we are going to be removing that to gain access. Uh, some coolant to top off the coolant system, because obviously the the oil cooler, which is bolted to this, has coolant running through it, and you do need to top that off. Uh, and I have a little bit of oil that we're gonna use to top off the system. A couple things to keep in mind. One, when you buy this complete housing, it comes loaded with both the front and rear gaskets as well as the oil filter. So you don't need to buy the rest of your oil filter kit if you're doing a change. I literally just did an oil change on this car uh, over the weekend, so I'm not going to do a full oil change, so I'm just gonna be topping it off, but if you are due for one, uh, I would recommend doing that at this time. And so with that, let's take a look at some of the tools that we're gonna need to get this job done. So as you can see, we're gonna be using a variety of common hand tools to replace the oil filter housing. Uh, there are a few specialty tools mixed in here. Primarily, you're looking at a quarter drive M6 socket. Uh, you're looking at an M6 12 point or triple square. Uh, you need a T25 and T T30 Torx, uh, some spring clamp, uh, spring hose clamp pliers would be very helpful, uh, as well as a good quality torque wrench that can go down to 10 newton meters, and a 36 millimeter oil filter socket. Outside of that, we're talking quarter drive ratchet, a variety of extensions there, and as always, a magnet uh, and a light would usually be helpful to tackle the job. And with that, let's get to it. So the first thing you want to do is pop your hood. Uh, obviously, I bought this car like this with this aftermarket intake on it. If you have a factory intake on it uh, on your, your GTI or similar car, the engine cover that goes over top of this is also the air box. So yours might look a little bit different. If you do have the factory engine, uh, factory air box on the car, you basically grab it and pull it straight up. You do need to be a little bit careful. Um, they tend to get stuck on there because they're just held on with these uh, rubber grommets and you can crack them when you're doing that. So you do have to use a lot of force. You do have to be careful at the same time when you're doing it. Um, but for this one, we just have these clamps. Um, so we're gonna use a slotted uh, bit just to loosen some of these things up to get the intake out of the way. And then you have one uh, T25 or two T25s up here um, that hold this to the front radiator support. So if you have a factory 
uh, intake, there's going to be a uh, plastic air box here, and you're going to have to access these T25s uh, the same way. So there's one on one here on the right, and there's also going to be one here on the left, and there was only one screw holding this in. Uh, so this. So once you've got your intake uh, or your air box out of the way, there's a few things you're going to need to disconnect. Uh, first thing we're going to do are these throttle body connections and intake manifold connections here. Um, they can be a little bit tricky to get to and a little bit tricky to get them to release. So usually what I recommend doing is pushing the, uh, the plug on a tiny bit using your finger to pop it loose and then you'll be able to pull it out. And we're just doing that now because we're going to need to do it at some point. So, hey, we might as well do it while we're up here. Um, lastly, you've got your uh, map sensor connection, the boost sensor connection on this boost pipe, because we are going to be removing this boost pipe to gain access. And it's the same kind of connection. You kind of push down and on and then pop it off. Um, so those all came off really easily. Sometimes they can be a real bear. Um, this car definitely has been serviced fairly regularly. Um, so maybe I'm just lucky, we'll see. While we're up top here, there's a 10 millimeter uh, that we're gonna remove. It's right next to the oil cooler line right here. There are some things that on this job you're gonna have to kind of do without being able to see it so well. It's not terrible, like there's not anything that's technically really difficult about this job. Um, it's just tight spaces and it can be a little bit of a hassle and a little bit of a mess. So get that 10 mil off. Uh, likewise, uh, we're gonna have to remove this, this boost pipe right here. Um, so this is for the noise pipe. If your car is modified, this might have already been removed. There's just a clip that goes there. And then we have a spring clip right down there that we're going to use some uh, spring clip pliers on. So depending on what car you have, this may not be on here. So um, like Golf R's and, and, and TTS's have a diverter valve down in this area. If it's a Passat, it probably doesn't have anything. And if it's a GTI or a GLI, it has the noise pipe. Um, that goes right there. And so the last thing that we're gonna do up top here is loosen this throttle body clamp right here. Uh, we are gonna remove the pipe before we remove the throttle body itself because we are gonna need to gain access to some bolts that are currently hidden. Uh, you can either use a really short slotted screwdriver or a seven mil uh, to remove this clamp. And this clamp's kind of an interesting one. It has like a little cage sort of that goes around the top of it. It's permanently attached to the hose. So when you loosen this, you don't need to worry about it falling off or falling down or anything like that. It's a nice little convenient design from, uh, from Volkswagen. So generally, one of the first things you wanna look for in terms of diagnosing this problem is gonna be oil drips on the ground. Uh, you can see this car is a pretty bad oil leak because you can see the drips coming off of this uh, splash shield right here. Uh, and once we get this off, you'll also see the amount of oil that's coming down the front of the block on the oil pan and kind of gets everywhere. Um, you'll also notice that once it kind of comes down here, it whips around and gets all over the subframe. So this can really make a mess uh, and it'll take a little bit for us to clean this up. So we're going to take out the T25s that hold this splash shield on. I'm missing a couple screws. Normally you have eight. I think I only have six on this. And We'll rectify that at some point, but it's not really that big of a deal. All right, this just slides off. So once you look at that, you can see the amount of oil that's been pulled up on that um, and what a mess it is. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do underneath here is we're gonna remove the rest of this boost pipe. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to pull the intercooler clip over here. Usually these come all the way off when you do this, like they pop completely out of the, uh, completely out of the clip. Um, and that's not really that big of a deal. Like when you, when you put it back in, they just snap in. Um, so you pop the clip off and as you can see, it just kind of goes on with the pins facing toward the front. Um, so when you pull this off, there might be some oil that's collected in here. It's pretty common. It just generally comes from the turbo. Um, whoops. So yeah, so this, this car hasn't had this thing serviced in quite a while, if ever. Um, so what happens is, is oil blows through the turbocharger and it collects in the intercooler and the intercooler pipes. So when you do that and oil leaks out, it's not the end of the world, it's probably totally fine. Um, just be ready for it and probably don't be underneath of it so you don't get oil all over yourself. Uh, so next up, there's a T30 that we're gonna remove right there. So 
So once you've got everything disconnected and unbolted down to the bottom, um, you're ready to take the pipe out. So obviously you've got this little stud that it sits on there. So what you wanna do is pull it away from the stud and then push it down. And it's a little bit tight. You can take out the fans if you want to, to do this job, uh, but I generally do not. There we go. And then you can kind of finish taking that out from the top side, or rather the, you can finish taking it out from the bottom side if you want. And voila, so that's your boost pipe uh, that you have now removed from the car. Um, so you can see here where I was talking about how this clamp is permanently joined to th the throttle body pipe. So this clamp doesn't go anywhere. You don't have to worry about losing it or anything like that. So your next step is gonna be to remove the throttle body. It's a little tricky to gain access. You have two T30s up here at the front and then two in the back. So you're gonna use probably a quarter drive, a T30 and a little bit of an extension. So because you're working in fairly tight quarters, I would recommend having an assortment of these, uh, these Volkswagen torque sockets. You're gonna need them all the time working on the car. Get a couple different varieties of these so you can kind of gain access and get to the things you need to get to because sometimes they're gonna be super useful in one length or size and then sometimes they're gonna be super useful in some other length and size. And you can see the air conditioning hose here is kind of in the way. And that's, that's kind of the summary of most of this job is things being in the way. It's not technically difficult. Uh, it's just kind of a little bit of a tight squeeze. Okay, so now that our throttle body is out of the way, uh, we need to make a little more room to actually gain access to the oil cooler or oil filter housing. You can see this silver piece right here. This is the oil cooler, and it has coolant running through it from, through the filter housing and then also through this hose. So we're gonna need to drain the coolant, but before we do that, let's get a little more uh, access to the actual cooler itself, so we're there. So I've got a T30, I'm gonna remove here. So this is a really short T30, a really short T30, so you definitely don't want to lose that. Okay, so if you can see here, there's one of the, one of the jobs that we're doing uh, is we're also replacing this hose right here because mine is cracked up at the PCV. So you can see it comes from the oil filter housing, snakes through here, and ends up right by our high pressure fuel pump and goes in here. So this clip here is broken, and this is a, a wear item that will crack over time. This one doesn't look too bad otherwise. But while I'm in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace that. So we've got our T30 here, and you can see this other coolant line is hard mounted and in the way. So we need, we need to make a little bit more room. All right, so in the interest of making a little more room for ourselves, we're gonna take a few things out real quick. Um, there's a little bracket, whoops, there's a little bracket that holds this harness in, that clips in and kind of pops up like that. And Normally these harnesses are all clipped in and this one is not. So you can see here, that just pops out and it was holding this, uh, this big connector we disconnected a little bit ago. And then the other thing we're gonna do since we're going to be replacing it, we're gonna pull this hose out now. Um, so this one's broken up top here, this clip, which is super common and it's very easy to break them when you disconnect them when they're, when they're a little bit old. So the bottom here, I'll, I'll show you. Uh, this part right here, as you can see, that clip is broken and it's got a bunch of gunk and stuff in it. So while we're in here, we're just gonna replace it. And you just kind of want to get a flathead in there and kind of work that clip just over the edge. And 
and just kind of want to there's a way you can squeeze them to actually make this work correctly uh, but I've never been very good at it so I usually just do it this way there we go so we just snake this up and out and we're going to replace this we've got a little bit more room here we've got our breather out of the way now normally i would take out that 12 point um, that's holding this bracket in place so that i could get a little bit more room uh, but unfortunately that rounded out so i'm going to try to work around it so we're basically to the point that we're ready to start taking out our two six mil allen head bolts that hold the oil cooler to the oil filter stand or the oil filter housing um, so there's you know, four in total, one up top there, one on the left, one on the right. Uh, but before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and drain the coolant out so we don't make a total incomplete mess. So before we uh, take anything else apart, we're also gonna take this time to do a little bit of degreasing just to get some of this out of the way. And you can really see how much is built up in there. It's really coming down. So. I probably need to power wash this car after. Doing this is kind of the rich man's power wash. Waste and brake clean, but it's definitely the fastest way to do it. Okay, so we're gonna use our spring pliers here to loosen whoops, this hose here off the bottom of the coolant after run pump. Um, so this will probably make a good mess. You definitely wanna make sure you have everything out of the way and ready to capture it. And because it's so soaked in oil, it's not uh, stuck on the pump. Yeah, so normally you would loosen the coolant cap before you do all that. So yeah, so it was holding the vacuum on it, which is why it wasn't all draining out. So now that we have our coolant drained, we're gonna drain the oil filter housing. So this is the same process that you would do when you're doing an oil change. You simply remove this little cap right here. And then I usually use uh, needle nose pliers. You can also use a flathead or any number of things. You have to pop it up and then to the side. There we go. I have MOS2 in this oil, which is why it looks the way that it does. So once you've allowed your oil filter housing to drain, uh, you can go ahead and use your pliers to pop that back in place. And it should just pop back in. Sometimes you have to kind of like pull them out just to make sure they seal tight. Uh, and it might take a little while for that to drain. It's going to drain one way or the other, whether you drain it from here or it all drains out when you disconnect the oil cooler. So it's better just to let it drain through there. Then we're going to go ahead and undo the six mil bolts that are on the bottom of the oil cooler. I don't know if you can see it right there, kind of right by my finger. Okay, so next up, we are going to remove uh, the bottom two bolts that hold the oil cooler on. You can see you have to use a quarter drive six mil uh, hex in order to get to that. If it's anything bigger, uh, the, the body of the socket won't allow you to get close enough. And these shouldn't be super tight. They should come out pretty easily. And again, you're kind of working blind here. So you kind of have to feel for things more often than not. I want to make sure I try to get that in as far as I can so I don't have any issues with the bolt. And we still have two bolts to do up top anyway. But... There we go. Um, I'm just trying to stay underneath of the car rather than go back up top. So there's two in the middle. There's kind of inset from the edges of the cooler. There's two of those same six mil uh, Allen keys or Allen head bolts. So you just kind of feel around until you, you go in there. All right, so the oil cooler is now disconnected and we're gonna hopefully get this a little lower. Hopefully be able to pop this thing off. Yeah. So as you can see, we've created even more of a mess um, because there's this coolant and oil that's going to go everywhere. It's pretty much unavoidable. You're not going to get around that. Um, so 
It's probably debatable um, whether or not you should pull this coolant hose off of the oil cooler uh, before you do all this or not. I chose to wait because I wanted to have better access on it than if I had tried to do that while it was up on the uh, hard mounted to the, the oil filter stand. So these oil coolers are occasionally known to go bad, but not often enough that I am preemptively re replacing this one. Um, kind of need to get a little pick in here to break the seal. And when you're doing this, you have to be careful not to rip it. And there we go. <laughs> so we're gonna clean this up a little bit before we put it back on, but you can see here um, where you have passages with oil going through and the coolant going through. And you can see some remnants of the gasket here. So we're gonna have to clean that up pretty good. Uh, we've got the oil cooler out of the way and there's four more bolts that are holding this thing on before we're done. And there is an oil pressure sensor that is connected. Um, so the four bolts that we have, you can see one is inside right there. It's a, either a 10 mil outer or a five mil inner. I usually recommend just using the 10 millimeter to get it loose. You're gonna get a more positive bite on it. But if you have a five millimeter Allen that you would rather use, you can do that because uh, it's a combination. Now, as we touched on earlier, that bolt up, or that screw right there, that machine screw, that 12 point is stripped out uh, and seized in place. So that bracket, ordinarily, I'd, that, this metal bracket right here, we would have that out of the way so we could actually access the top two bolts. But since we can't do that, we're going to just kind of bend it out of the way and hope for the best uh, rather than spend a bunch of time trying to extract that, uh, that screw. So once the, the screws are broken free, they should come out very easily. There's not a lot of torque on these, and they've probably been in place since the car was brand new. Yes, and they're sealed in there, so it's not like there's gonna be corrosion, generally speaking. As you can see, we've bent our bracket out of the way there, and I've got my 10 mil deep sitting on that bolt right there that we need to access, so once I've got that there, And once it's free, you'll probably be able to just get it by hand. So I'm gonna get the ratchet out of the way. All right, and this last bolt that we're gonna get, uh, if, you, if you see the little brass piece right there, right there, there's this little uh, passageway gasket there. It's kind of to the left. Uh, so it's right in the little divot on the corner. And once it's free, you can just put the socket on it and take it out by hand. All right, so the last thing that we're gonna do is try to get this thing broken free. Be careful, you might get more oil, more coolant. And I've still got the oil pressure uh, switch connected here. Get that out of the way, so the oil pressure switch is right here. So as you can see, I, I couldn't get to it from where I was, like basically the, the clip on that side where my finger is, yep. is in the wrong spot. Um, so I wanted to kind of get it free so I could gain a little better access. Okay, so now that all our bolts are out, essentially the oil, the oil filter housing is wedged in the, up against the block um, behind this coolant hose right here. Now this coolant hose doesn't have a lot of room to move, but you have to basically pull that out of the way to get the oil filter housing out. So what I basically do is you kind of pull up and out and you have to kind of maneuver it out of the way. And there's a couple things on the bottom. I'm probably gonna to jump to the, the bottom side of this as you can see, to make sure it's not hung up. There we go. Oh, there's so many wires and hoses and, and things. You basically just always wanna do your due diligence to make sure you're not um, ripping something out while you're doing this. So we're gonna, we're gonna put it up in the air and finish taking it out from the bottom. So now we're back underneath the car. And, and like I said, you're gonna have to bounce back and forth quite a bit. So we were basically hung up. The uh, oil pressure switch was hung up on a, a cable there. And then down she comes. The old gaskets end up kind of rock hard. It looks like it might've been leaking from there, but this is the main area that I was concerned about because you have this long distance between these two bolts. And this part right here is usually what leaks. Let's say this was leaking. You're like, you know what? I'm just gonna replace this gasket because that's certainly something you could do. 
a lot of time what will happen when you go to take this out, and it didn't do it on this one, um, but sometimes these little, pla these little tiny plastic ridges will break. Um, outside of that, if you were to put a level, like a, a flat uh, uh, ruler or something like that, uh, machinist ruler, whatever you want to call it, across this, it would end up not being flat. Um, so your ability to seal is, is, is really not there. So as you can see, from the amount of time that it, it kind of takes to get this thing out, it's a real pain. Um, and it's not the kind of thing you want to do a lot. So that's why I always recommend replacing the entire housing and not just trying to replace these gaskets here. So this entire thing is, is junk. We're not gonna use any of this. Uh, we are, however, gonna take this oil pressure switch off and swap it over to our new housing. So we're gonna take a 24 millimeter wrench and just kind of crack this loose and thread this off. So when you're ready, swap it over new housing and I would just snug this. Uh, torque on this should be about 15 Newton meters, which is not a whole heck of a lot. You don't want to overdo it because it is a brass uh, fitting and it is designed to crush a little bit on the seal or on the crush ring. Um, so just kind of put it in like that and you are good to go. So once you've got the housing out of the way, uh, what you mainly need to do is prep that surface there. So that's the, the area where the oil filter housing meets the block. So basically what I usually do is I'll, I'll spray a rag with some brake clean and I'll wipe it off. And you'll kind of continually do that over and over and over again while it oozes a little bit. You just kind of want the surface to be as fresh as you can get it for when you install. Now that we're at this stage, if you're not replacing your dipstick tube, you, need, you can ignore this part. But as you can see, the dipstick is broken here and the tube was a little worse for wear. And so basically if you are doing this job, whoops, this is an inexpensive thing to do uh, that you can actually replace while this is out. So this is like your proverbial $10 part. Uh, it's easy to replace, so you might as well replace it while, you're, while you have access. So we've cleaned it up a bunch, but you can see that plastic clip right there is where the dipstick tube actually connects. So we're just gonna break it off, kind of. Ah, there we go. So once you get enough of it kind of pried off, it'll, it'll just kind of pop off like that. Uh, and then you can go back up top, finish fishing it out. So from up top here, you can kind of see where I was working. So the, short, the tube's actually not that long. Um, so actually I'm just gonna take the dipstick out first. And then the tube slides right out. Um, so I'm just gonna like, rub down the little metal part of that dipstick tube with a rag just for the sake of being particular. So and then just kind of pop it into place and that's it. And take your 10 mil Thread that back in. Just kind of snug it up. And with that, we're ready to start on the reinstallation of the uh, new oil filter housing. Okay, so our new dipstick tube is in there and I'm just gonna wipe down this block area again. I've been kind of continually degreasing and trying to clean this up as much as possible. And this little green uh, connected wire right here, I'm gonna disconnect this because I should have done it before and I didn't, and it was kind of in the way. So I'm just gonna disconnect that so that'll give us a tiny bit more room, hopefully, uh, on how we're gonna go in here uh, to, to get this new one in. So we've disconnected this green connection here, uh, and there's also this little plastic bracket here that's giving us some trouble, and I, I think that might've been hanging us up on the way down. So we're just gonna remove this six millimeter right here all that does is hold this bracket in, it holds a couple of wiring harnesses, but I think that this was causing us some uh, clearance issues. So we're gonna take this out before we put the new one in. And the thing you gotta watch out for is this and how it sticks out. Um, and then this part right here. So we should be able to just snake it up in there. And hopefully not have as much trouble as we had on the way out. And you can see I'm running into that metal pipe 
Uh, same as we did on the way out, that one I had to flex out of the way. Whoops. And there we go, flexed it out of the way. <laughs> so we're, we're pretty much in, in about where we need to be. So we're gonna connect the oil filter pressure sensor before I forget to connect it. And then we're gonna try to, there we go. So we've got it in position and the easiest way to do this is if you look on the bottom here, you basically can see the hole in the block where that one bolt will go in to mount it. So you just can kind of sit it there and then grab your bolts. So basically just thread it through and then you wanna just thread it in by hand and you don't wanna tighten it up yet. You wanna kinda of get all of them started. Um, so I'm gonna do that from the bottom here for the most part. And then we've got two on the top. There's the one that's here to the left. So I've got one more. This is the one that we had to bend that bracket out of the way for. And it goes right about in the middle there. And that's the one you can actually see the, the most from up top. Okay, now what I'm gonna do before I torque them is just snug them with this little tiny quarter drive. This is definitely something that you want to torque appropriately because one, uh, you're dealing with uh, a gasket, that, like it's that, an O-ring gasket that has to crush down and an appropriate amount of tension will make sure it seals too much or too little. Uh, can lead, lead you to have some problems with sealing. So we're just gonna get them snug and then we'll break out the torque wrench to actually torque them. Um, so we've got this set to 15 Newton meters, uh, or it's about 132 inch pounds. And we're just gonna jump in here. And as you can see, this is not, this is not a lot of torque. This is very, very minimal. And then usually what I'll do is once you've got them all torqued, is you go over all of them again um, because it is plastic and there's rubber. So you wanna make sure that it's consistent all the way across. Uh, so with that, we're ready to go to the next step where we start putting our oil cooler back on. So something I try to make sure I do is reconnect all the electrical connections and things as I go along to make sure I don't forget anything uh, and end up with a car that won't start or has a check engine light or needs to be taken back apart. Um, so here we have our original oil cooler. I've cleaned it up, I've wiped it down with brake clean and I used a, a light scotch bright pad to try to remove as much of the old uh, gasket as I could um, without going too crazy on it. You don't wanna create any low spots or anything like that, but you wanna make sure you have a fresh uh, surface uh, to try to get it to make sure that it seals correctly. So we're just gonna slot it up in there. And you gotta kinda work around the housing and underneath of that bracket. Same as on the, uh, the filter housing. I'm just gonna start these six mil Allens by hand just to position it and hold it in. Once they're actually in, I can uh, tighten them. For our oil cooler, we have our bottom two Allens in. Uh, we're gonna try and go in from the top here. There's two of them. Uh, it's essentially, one is just to the left of that plug that's facing us, and one is just to the right of that. Um, so we're gonna try to snake this thing in as best we can. Now, the, the hassle that we're gonna have here is that I basically, for the top two bolts, have to bend this bracket back into position that I bent out of position because that triple square was stripped out and donezo. So ordinarily, this bracket would be 100% out of the way, and then you just put it back, no problem. But because of this, we have to kinda get it back into position, um, and then we'll be able to get these two bolts in. And you can kinda see if you lift up that hose there, there's kind of like a, that little divot that goes in toward the center. There's one of those on each side. So basically the bolt's gonna self-locate as we kind of slide it in there. Just like the other ones, I'm starting this by hand, especially paranoid because I had bent that thing out of the way. So you never know what's gonna be in an angle. 
but I think we're pretty golden here. And we're using our six millimeter Allen and we're just gonna drive these in and snug them up. And then we're gonna get the torque wrench out and we're gonna torque them to the same exact spec as the uh, filter housing, which is 15 newton meters. Um, so we've got the six mil in there and we're gonna torque these to 15 newton meters uh, or around 11 foot pounds. So we've got our oil cooler in place and re-torqued, so now I'm going to reconnect the coolant line that runs over to that. Um, if you don't have a set of uh, spring clamp pliers and you own a Volkswagen, definitely invest in them. It's probably one of the most useful purchases that you'll ever make for working on your car. Um, so usually you want to make sure you put the clamp in approximately the same place that it was in before if you are reusing coolant hoses. And now this one, as we talked about, is looking pretty rough, um, but I did not order one of these to install, so we're just gonna reuse this one for now. So that should not be like that loose. So you can see how it's got that indentation there. So I'm basically gonna try to line it back up. So it puts pressure in exactly the same spots and then hopefully we won't have any leakage issues. You wanna make sure all your wiring's going where it's supposed to go, so you've got your plugs here for the throttle body and intake manifold and then this other uh, connector here. Make sure those are up top. All the rest of the wiring is tucked behind there. This is your map sensor plug. Uh, and then we have these two uh, here that go into that plastic uh, bracket we removed earlier. So I'm gonna put the plastic bracket back in now. Oh, okay. That little spot there, that's where it came from. So it kind of sits there, just chilling like that. Um, so we're just gonna pop it back in that same place. And it's kind of slot those back in. All right, so we're good to go back top side. We're gonna to put the throttle body back on, get the boost pipe back in, and we're almost done. So we're about to put the throttle body back on. Before we do that, we're gonna replace the throttle body gasket, which is this little green ring here. Now I can feel that it's still got a little bit of an edge to it. So if this has recently been done, you can probably get away without having to do this, but I don't know the history in the car, so I'm going to go ahead and replace it. Um, so there's this little green tab. All you have to do is kind of grab that and pull it out. So we're just going to basically position it, try to get the, uh, the tab in that same exact place. And you just want to press it and make sure it goes all in all the way around um, so it doesn't pinch or tear uh, or anything like that. So the throttle body goes back in. So right here, there's a little locating tab on your throttle body to let you know you're putting it in the right way. And same as the rest of the ones that we've done, we're just gonna start them one at a time and go all the way around before we start actually tightening anything down. Now there is a torque spec for this, but I am not going to torque them because you can see how cramped it is. Um, so you basically just need to make them snug to make sure that you get a good crush on the gasket, but you are going into a plastic intake manifold. So if you strip one out, that could be a major hassle for you. Uh, so now we've got the last couple of things we just need to button together. Um, so we've got this harness here that's hanging out and I just need to tuck that kind of in. Lift this up just to kind of get it happy. And that's where it lives, is kind of behind that, uh, that little metal bracket there. Uh, we have our little super shorty T30 screw that we took out earlier. And that goes in right there. So we've got that snugged up. And the last thing that we have is this little uh, bracket right here and it just, it kind of, you can see those little threaded posts there, and it just kind of clips down onto those. And this big connector here slots into the big connector piece here, so. This, and then it also connects to this harness here. So it's like one plastic bracket, does a lot of stuff. This little connector, so you can see it kind of has a little receiver on the left side there for how that clips in. And then this big mamma jamma here 
connects just like so and sits like that. And so that leaves you uh, your throttle body and intake manifold. So, and I'm just gonna go ahead and connect those now to get them out of the way. <clears throat> now, last but not least, we have our PCB bre PCV breather, which we are going to thread in the way that it came out. All you have to do is guide it in until it clicks. There we go. Good. So we're good down there. Uh, we've got this thing through uh, up top here. Just kind of have to like finagle it in, connect it. I disconnected this really quickly just to make it happy. Uh, and now we're good there, so. So now we have our, th our uh, intercooler pipe that's gotta come in uh, through the bottom. So I'm just gonna kind of get underneath of it real quick and try to shove it up and then feed it through um, so we can get it in, into position. So once you kind of get into position, you can get that, uh, that little pin, that post back on that little nub right there uh, for the actual pipe. So you wanna, you wanna basically get it onto the throttle body first. And then once it's in that general, in that vicinity or close to it, you'll be able to get that uh, into position. You kind of just have to work it on to make sure you're getting it on all the way around. Because obviously you don't want it folded under on the backside or something like that. So basically just give it a couple wiggles once you get it close and the intercooler uh, pipe, uh, throttle body pipe rather, should just pop back on. So we're gonna take our seven mil just snug that up and you want to snug this up you don't want to go crazy tight with it though because you are clamping onto a rubber boot and you can over tighten it um, from there we're going to pop our 10 mil back on and this is just a, a 10 millimeter nut that goes on that stud start it by hand and then snug it up with your quarter drive and and for really the most most of this job you're not using high torque at all. Everything you're working with is pretty delicate. And then the last thing I'm gonna do up here is plug in our map sensor. Clip that back into place, make sure it's snug. That's good to go. And then we're gonna put our noise pipe connection back on. Um, so this is the clip for our noise pipe connection right here. Um, so it's got, usually the way these go on is the pointed part goes toward the part that's clipping into it. And there's a little, uh, receiver part on here that this will kind of sit in. So it just kind of slots in. Whoops, there we go. Uh, and it, the part that actually locks in there um, just clips. So we're going to connect our boost hose here. And if you're looking for a little bit of a performance gain, you can get rid of this thing. And then that physically just clips in, and that's all there is to it. Get that down to where it needs to go. And again, you can kind of line it up using the old marks on the hose. That's what, that way you know that you're getting it in the right spot. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna reconnect our intercooler pipe here. It's an absolute mess. I've got some new O-rings on order for this thing, believe it or not. Um, they're not currently here. There we go. So we get the clip back into place and then this intercooler pipe lines up and clips in. So we're good there. And what I'm basically gonna do is check in anything. I've got one, I've got a T30 to put back in on this boost pipe. And then we're gonna take the, uh, take the oil filter down and do a pre-fill on it. So there's a T30 bolt uh, that we're putting back in that goes to our boost pipe right here. And like everything else, um, it's gonna be a really light torque spec on it, around 10 Newton meters or just about about hand snug, basically, just to get happy. So keeping in mind that you have basically drained all of the oil out of the oil cooler, out of the oil filter and housing, um, we are going to do a little bit of a pre-fill on this to try to minimize the time that the car runs uh, without oil pressure. So you're gonna use your 36 millimeter socket
And you're just gonna take the uh, filter housing cap off here. Now one, you're gonna do that to make sure that you've actually got an oil filter in there, and you do. Uh, we're using a genuine one, so it's got a genuine Volkswagen Audi uh, oil filter in there. But two, is I'm gonna do a little bit of a pre-fill on this uh, with oil. It, you can't really put a whole lot in there, uh, but the longer, or the, the little bit of extra oil you can put in there does help to get oil to, to the rest of the engine. So basically I'm just gonna pour, oops, a little bit of oil in there and just thread it back up there. And part of my theory about why these do begin to leak is that when you do oil changes, um, obviously you're putting torque onto that assembly and it's all plastic, so that probably doesn't help it. And you can see that this is marked with your torque spec, um, 25. Uh, Newton meters plus five, it says. So this is torqued about 25 Newton meters or literally just about hand tight with a uh, three-ish drive ratchet. Um, I generally don't torque those, I just snug them up and call it good. So we're good there. So we are gonna check our oil levels. We're gonna do an initial fill on coolant, start her up and uh, make sure we don't have any leaks. And just checking the oil level. It's gonna be low, obviously, by a little bit. Uh, but it doesn't look like it. So we're basically gonna run the car. Uh, there's plenty of oil in the dipstick. Um, so we're basically gonna run the car. And, and then after we've run it and it's circulated through, we're gonna, we'll check it again later. So there's a couple different ways that you can do coolant on this. Um, I'm a little bit lazy, I guess. Um, I've had a few of these cars and haven't really had any problems with coolant pockets. It certainly is possible. So if you have a vacuum filler, it's probably the nice way to do it. Um, certainly the professional way to do it. But what I generally will do is I will fill up the reservoir and then I will fill up um, this upper uh, radiator hose. Um, so I'll basically disconnect it right here. This you do have to be careful of. This looks like it's been replaced, but this nipple can get uh, soft and it'll break. Um, so I, I will, I'll fill it up basically at both ends, 50-50 uh, coolant water mix uh, until it spills out a little bit here and then we'll run the car and cycle it and so on and so forth and get it hot. Uh, and it should be good to go. Um, usually when you do that, you are gonna have a, a, the level drop overnight, typically, uh, or after the first full cycle. So I do recommend carrying some coolant with you to uh, top it off the next morning um, after you complete the job. So this is a concentrated uh, Pentosin coolant, uh, G13. So G13, G12+, plus, G12++ plus plus is all compatible the same way. It's basically the pink, uh, Volt pink or purple Volkswagen coolant. Um, this is concentrated. I'm basically, because I know it's gonna take a lot of coolant, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and dump uh, basically this bottle in, and then I'll dump a whole bottle of water in, and then we'll be at 50-50. And I'm gonna overfill it a little bit because I know it's gonna go down as soon as I start the car. Um, so this is just straight water because I poured straight coolant into the uh, the other connection there. Normally you'd have to be worried about this, but I know that a bunch of it drained out, so I'm not worried about the level of mix going off. Oh, there we go. So like by filling it on both ends, basically by filling the, the radiator up and then sort of like the block up, it kind of pushes the air around. And that's one of the ways you can help to avoid air bubbles if you don't have a vacuum filler. There we go. Um, so I'm gonna take my other bottle of coolant. I'm gonna mix up two more bottles of this. It'll be a 50-50 mix, and then we'll be able to kind of finish off heat cycling and filling. And I generally always overfill it a little bit because I know for a fact that it will burp and it will suck in and I will be adding more. But that's good enough for now. You can leave the cap off. Make sure you reconnect your spring clamp here. Um, believe it or not, I actually forgot to reconnect one of these ones. And don't tell anybody, it was on track. And did not have it pop off or have an issue. So I was clearly the luckiest person in the world that day. So then we're gonna go, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put this intake back in. As I've said before, your reinstallation may vary. So we have our single T25, should have two, but one's good enough for this right now. So, uh, so I'm just, there's a, a single, I'm using a T25, I think it's an M4 Allen. It's an aftermarket bolt, so it's nothing that you would normally find on the car anyway. Guten tight, as they say. 
So we're just going to go ahead and put this air filter back in. We're going to jump in the car, we're going to start it up. Now because there's not any oil in that entire assembly, when you start it, it's going to sound like a box of rocks. There we go. You want to jump out and do a quick visual inspection for any leaks. If it's going to happen, it's probably going to happen now. So I'm just going to duck underneath here. There's nothing pouring out of it right now, which is obviously a good sign. So once you've started the car, you've checked for any leaks or anything like that. You've checked basically between the block and the oil filter housing to make sure there's no oil leaks there or between the oil cooler. Uh, and the oil filter housing, you're basically good to put your under tray back on and button everything back up and you're, you're good to go. So as you can see, replacing the oil filter housing on a Mark V GTI or any other FSI car is a little bit of an involved job. It's pretty messy and it's not necessarily a lot of fun. Uh, it's not really technically all that difficult. You don't need a lot of specialty tools, but it'll take some time and a little bit of patience. Um, on, luckily, however, this is really one of the only major oily components that can occur on this car. They're, obviously, they have a couple of problems that'll pop up, but this is one of the major things that if you do decide to tackle this job on your own, you know you're gonna be good to go for quite a few additional miles. Um, hopefully, we covered everything in the video that you needed to see in order to tackle this job yourself at home. If you have any questions about the process, uh, the job that we did, the tools that we used or anything else, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and we will see you on the next one.